Dr. Franklin, and I will be interacting with you through this course, Music Literature. Some of you might be looking at this video as a part of Music Literature 1, which is in USI 1308. Others of you might be viewing this video as a part of Music Literature 2, which is Music 1309. I'm preparing the same conversation or introduction for both courses because they're really two parts of the same whole. You have one textbook. That textbook is designed for use in both courses. So if you're taking Music 1308, you will be working with the first roughly half of the text going from the Antiquities up through the end of the Baroque period, getting us to the Classicals. If you are taking Music 1309, then you're starting with the end of the Baroque and coming up to the present day. So for music majors, the obvious advantage is you only have to purchase the book one time and use it in both courses. This course is going to require you to do a lot of listening. In some institutions, music literature and music history are combined. Other institutions will separate music history from music literature and treat them separately, requiring music majors to take both. This is a music literature course, so let me know, let, let you know rather what to expect from me in terms of an approach of offering the content. We will be focusing on the literature of these periods, which means doing a lot of listening. However, this will be within the historical and the social context because music does not ha happen in a vacuum. It matters what was going on in the world at the time, what was happening in literature, what was happening in art, what was influencing the composers of that, those periods, why were certain decisions made, why were certain instruments used in favor of other instruments. So context really matters. So the history of music has to be a part of our discussion, but the majority of our focus will ultimately be on the end product, which we describe as the literature. Therefore, you have to listen to a lot of music in these courses. That means that you have to allow for that time. If you're like me, part of your life happens in your car or in what we call those interspaces between point A and point B. So some of your listening might be while you're transporting. Some of your listening might be through something that you've downloaded onto your iPod or perhaps you're accessing the library's online database for your music so that you're walking or you're exercising or you're running. You will figure out how you're going to fit this in. But what I'm trying to make sure you understand is that you have a lot of listening in this course because it is a music literature course. So give some thought as to how you will factor that in to what is otherwise your normal routine. You will have to go to some YouTube sites for some of your literature. And in other instances, you will be using the Naxos library system that I referred to a second ago. And that is available to you through the Dallas County Community College library system, online database. We're really fortunate. All college library systems are not equal. And in the DCCCD, they maintain a commitment toward offering a really, really large online database. And that Naxos, spelled N-A-X-O-S as in Sam, that Naxos system offers tens of thousands of individual compositions in a variety of musical styles and from a variety of periods. And so we will be utilizing this a great deal wherever possible. This is in lieu of having you or requiring you to really purchase hundreds of dollars of CDs that are always available. Now, some students opt to purchase the extra CDs which were published as part of that online library system for the publisher, and that's great. But it's not being required in part because if you're only taking one semester and you have that expenditure, then you're sort of really losing because guess what? The bookstore does not buy back those CDs. They will repurchase the textbooks, 
but the CDs are a different matter and that, that gets to copyright laws and that sort of thing. So uh, pre be prepared that in terms of the system that you're using, your computer system, your bandwidth, it needs to be able to accommodate download of video, it needs to be able to accommodate streaming audio, and um, remember also that whether you're taking this course face-to-face -face or online, you always are not that far away from one of the campuses within the DCCCD. As a student enrolled in courses in our district, you have access to use the computer lab, you have access to use the on-campus library. So if your personal computer is a little questionable in terms of you being able to access these audio or video files, or if you don't own a computer, because you're not required to own a computer to take this course, you have access to the computers that are designated for student use on the campus of the Dallas County Community College District, and there are seven campuses, so I, I think that's one of the best things we do. So you can access this online, and you also have that phys physical accessibility to the course also. We will be busy this semester, busy listening and reading and listening some more and reading and listening some more. Oh, and in between, there will be assignments and there will be some exams and some quizzes. But hopefully by the end of the semester, you will feel um, more deeply informed and connected with the material and that you will have a greater understanding about this language that we call music.